Aha, there you are, traveller. Welcome to another ten-minute battle report. This time I face wood elves with my tomb kings. As usual, let's jump straight into army lists, which are also in the video description should you wish to peruse them. As you can see, my opponents using this phoenix as a forest dragon, which I think works very well in this paint scheme. You may also have noticed that I'm going tomb guardless for the first time, as I have two blocks of skeleton archers to try out. Here's deployment. We're just playing the standard scenario. My forces are concentrated mostly in the center, with my necro sphinx out on the right flank, and my necro serpents on the left flank. Here's a better shot of Wood Elves' center and the right flank with their skirmishing glade riders. The wood on the right was placed by the elves. They get the first turn, and movement's very conservative. The dragon hangs back, and the units with their Azrai longbows easily outrange my skeleton archers. The Spellweaver raises a magical forest in the center, which is the template you can see. In shooting, they just manage to plink off a couple of archers from the right-hand unit. My turn one, and I raise back the archers and move most things up. First off, I must apologize for the unpainted models, although I'll try as much as possible to field painted units. It just isn't practicable. I hope to have the archers painted before too long, although probably not before the next report. Secondly, I really don't like my movement here. My constructs in the center are blocking the leftmost archer block, which has the level 1 amulet of the Serpent Priest in it, for poison shots, and the Ushapti. In hindsight, I don't think I should have moved forward with anything except the archers. My thinking at the time was that the elves outshoot me with their hagbane arrows, so I can't afford to hang back. However, I think I should have trusted in my priests to heal back most damage suffered, got my archers into range, and relaxed in the knowledge that every dead elf weakens his army, whereas I can soak up arrows all day. In Wood Elves' turn two, all that happens is he casts a pillar of fire, as shown by the small template, plinks off a couple of archers again, and maybe does a wound or two to the Necropolis Knights. His movement is minimal, with the scouts coming forward slightly and the war dancers trying to hide from the rightmost archer's line of sight. My turn too, and I continue to push forward, which just compounds the issue I already described. My necro sphinx flies over the wood to challenge the right flank. I think I may be kill a war dancer, and maybe an eternal guard with bowfire. A couple of the Ushapti can see the dragon and try to wound it but either miss or fail to wound. I dispel the wood, but the pillar of fire hits my king, fortunately doing nothing. Azray, turn three. The pillar of fire heads towards my poison archer block. The army still refrains from committing, with the scouts moving forward to completely block the central constructs, and the war dancers angling to avoid shooting again. Hagbane Bowfire from the Glade Riders pours into the Necro Sphinx, causing two wounds. I forgot to get a picture of it, but the wood gets summoned again, in front of the Necro Sphinx this time, roughly in this position, which will stop the Sphinx from being able to charge the archers next turn. My turn three. We have three charges in the center. The King and Colossus into the Scouts and the Sphinx into the War Dancers. There's only really combats to note this turn, to be honest, and the two constructs in the center easily devour all the scouts, while the Necro Sphinx kills two or three war dancers, 
and suffers one wound in return. I think they chose the four plus war dance. Wood elves turn four, and the Glade Lord sees his chance and swoops into my colossus. The Glade Riders gallop all the way round to the flank of my rightmost archer block. The elves have by this point managed to whittle away one of the Necropolis Knights with bowfire. In combat, the Glade Lord easily tears the Colossus to shreds, but doesn't manage to overrun into the skeletons behind, only getting a four even with swift stride. The war dancers whiff their saves this time, and there are now only two left alive, plus the Shadow Dancer. In my turn four, I have some big decisions to make. I'm ecstatic that the Glade Lord didn't make it into the skeletons, as now I can unleash my poison bows and my Ushabti at him. He's outside of the Ark of my King, though, so I decide to plow ahead and charge the King into the block of Eternal Guard. I also bite the bullet with the Necropolis Knights and turn to face the dragon. They might be needed to help finish it off later on, so I give up on chasing down the small five-man unit of archers on the far left. I manage to cast Desiccation on the dragon, I think, lowering its toughness to five, but I fail a crucial roll to cast Cursed Blades, meaning I won't re-roll ones to hit. <sighs> In the end, I pour everything I have into the dragon and only end up doing a single wound. Conversely, my rightmost archer block rolls incredibly well and slays six Glade Guard in one deadly volley. In combat, the Necro Sphinx finishes off the War Dancers and Shadow Dancer, surviving with one wound remaining. And my king reaps a healthy toll of seven Eternal Guard, taking no wounds in return. They flee, and I pursue, failing to catch them but running into the Elven Level 4 instead. Well, 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 look what the cat's about to turn into red paste. Elves turn five and the Glade Lord charges into my archer block with both priests in it. I curse at the fact I made my level four join the block earlier, out of fear of the rampaging Glade Riders to his right. Speaking of which, they charge the flank of my other archer unit. There's not much shooting now, so in combat, the Glade Lord slays my unit champion in a challenge, and a few more skeletons crumble from the overkill. Over here, I was shocked to see the Glade Riders tear through over half the unit after Crumble. Looks like they'll easily chew their way through the entire block before long. Up here, my king makes short work of the Elven Level 4, then overruns into the rallied Eternal Guard. In my turn 5, I flank charge the dragon from both sides. In combat, my king continues to do well against the Eternal Guard, and there are only 9 of them left now. The Glade Riders bring the Archer block down to just three remaining. In the Central Combat. Ah, the Central Combat. Although I have a fair few attacks I could make against the Dragon, I'm very wary of the Dragon just opting to wail on the Skeletons and crumble all my units through combat res. I therefore feel I have to keep challenging the Dragon out with whatever I can, so I sacrifice my Necropolis Knight Champion. This is obviously a losing proposition, as I'm not able to harm the dragon by doing this, and my healers and casters are both stuck in combat, so can't do anything. At this stage, I'll just skip to a picture of the end of the game and summarize the whole of turn six. My king triumphed against the Eternal Guard and turned to try and finish off the depleted Glade Guard unit, but they fled, and he failed to catch them. As my healers couldn't heal, the dragon was able to finish off everything it was in combat with. It might have had help from the Glade Riders too, I'm not sure. In the end then, I have my king and my big spear block left, while the elves have their lord, Glade Riders, and two units of Glade Guard. So, the points are actually surprisingly close, because I managed to score a lot more from claiming banners. Tomb Kings scored 1,261, but Wood Elves were victorious with 1,378. If I'd sent the bloody Necropolis Knights after the five-man Glade Guard unit, instead of wasting them against the dragon, I may have scored enough to claim a draw, or maybe even a win. The problem is deeper than that, though, as I think my whole strategy was flawed from the outset, as I mentioned earlier. 
I should have leveraged my shooting, combined with the fact that I generally don't care about wounds being plinked off here and there to force the Wood Elves to come to me. There was no need to send all my combat units rushing off to engage the enemy. Blocking the visibility of my archers and Dushabti at times was also dreadful, and something I'll need to be mindful of in future. Still, I was quite pleased to do almost enough to bag a draw against a dragon list. Anyway, this one was another mightily fun battle, so thanks to my opponent, and thanks to you, Traveller, for watching. If you would consider liking, commenting and subscribing, that would be most kind, and I hope to see you in the next report. Goodbye.